Here's a digital clock from around 1979 that I think is both quite interesting and quite attractive. I was not able to find much information about this clock, despite the fact that the designer of the clock has put their name on the back of it. You can see it says P. Peterson, copyright 878, and most of the chips were built in either 1978 or 1979, which means that the very earliest that this clock was made was 1979. I of course don't know the exact date it was put together, but I'm sure it wasn't too much later than that. It's unclear if this was a kit, a limited production item, or someone's own homebrew. If one of you guys out there knows that, please let me know, because I am curious. It's quite an involved design, and unlike any other I've seen. To me, the design of this clock is pretty impressive, especially when you consider the fact that there were no computerized trace routing tools available in 1978 at least to my knowledge. You can see the PCB design is quite complicated with a lot of through holes used and traces that run close together and it looks like they only made one mistake in the board design. You can see those uh, jumper wires at the same positions uh, all the way around. Since you can see through the board a bit you can see that the could have had a trace on the other side to connect those two points. But honestly with such a complex design to have only made one mistake like that is, you know, pretty impressive. The one thing that's a little less impressive to me is the way that the board is mounted. You'll notice that there's no screws or anything around the perimeter of the board. The only thing that holds it in place is this back plexiglass piece pressing down on the bodies of these three switches, which is how one of them got broken loose. And on the front here, the LEDs press on the front plexiglass. You can see they've kind of scratched the front up a bit. I did clean up this plexiglass. It was actually quite opaque in a ring around the edge here where the LEDs touch it, I guess from the board sliding around. Thankfully that cleaned up fairly easily. And I'd say it looks quite nice now. At the heart of the clock is the MM5311 right there. That was made by National Semiconductor and it's a pretty basic clock chip which has uh, BCD outputs. And then the rest of the circuitry here handles mapping that out to the ring of LEDs on the outside and the inner ring as well. There's no alarm or anything like that, but honestly you don't really need that sort of thing on a wall clock anyway. So you saw the minutes just advance there. It's now 7.25 and 10 seconds. Reading this clock would be quicker if there was markings around the edge at least every quarter hour. The transistors around the rim are spaced 10 minutes apart and then there's thicker traces on the 5 minute intervals between. This clock was working when I got it but it was pretty beat up and dirty. I cleaned it up and changed the capacitors as well as the three switches on the back. Two of them are vintage Archer push buttons and this one's a more modern Radio Shack push button. The three original switches also had the tops cut off but they were cut flush with the body of the switch which meant you had to use a pen or some other object to push in the switches. You had to press quite hard on them. The switches were very worn out. I suspect this clock was used for a long time. When one of the switches broke loose, I decided I would just replace the three of them, and now it is much easier to set. The clock keeps excellent time, and it uses the line frequency as its time base, which is what most early clocks did. And it's still a pretty effective solution if you live in an area with reliable power. I've got the time set perfectly, but I know some of you are going to ask, why didn't I show off setting it if I don't do it, so here goes. The first button here is the fast set button. As with other National Semiconductor clock chips, the MM5311 rapidly advances the minutes and holds the seconds when the fast set button is pushed. You can see the hours going around there, and the seconds was stationary. The middle button is the slow set button, which will rapidly advance the seconds. There it goes. You can see the minutes incrementing. And the last switch is the hold switch. 
I chose to use a modern push button switch for the hold switch because it's much easier to press and it makes more reliable contact. Sometimes you might have to hold the hold switch down for a minute or so instead of going all the way around again. So I wanted that one to be easy to use. The clock runs off 9 volts AC from an AC adapter and it's fed by this fairly thin, I believe Teflon covered wire. I added that heat shrink tubing there so that it wouldn't get abraded by the edge of this aluminum body which seems to have been custom machined. It's quite a big piece too. Since I've already screwed up the time on this thing I might as well show you guys the AC adapter. From the text on here you can tell this thing was pilfered from a electronic calculator. It says 8 watts but it doesn't draw anywhere near that. If I remember correctly it draws around 2. 8 watts is a lot for only 275 milliamps out. The transformer is a little bit loose on the inside which is less than ideal but I'm not too worried about it. This thing won't be getting moved around much. I did redo the connection here between the narrow gauge wire and the original wire of the AC adapter. It looked pretty ugly the way the original builder had done it. I might change this power supply out at some point but it runs nice and cool so it would really just be an aesthetics thing. Well, thanks for watching.